Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Live in the Tank with Keith Dale and Aaron Harrison. It is Tuesday, people, and we are fired up in action, been jamming all day, and I'm so thankful to be with you guys today. So let's go. As uh, always, let's go ahead and share some gratitude. Let me know what you're grateful for. While you do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, send out some invites, let people know we're here live. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. And uh, yeah, man, let's start. Let's start December strong, guys. I think it's really important to remember that we set targets on what it is that we're looking for, right? If we don't know where we're going, how the heck are we going to get there, right? Or how will we even know what's required uh, along the way in the journey? And and that's what it's about, guys. It's, It's really about setting sail. I was listening to a motivational video this morning that was talking about what optimists do, what pessimists do, and what opportunists do, right? And so the optimists would basically say, oh, the wind's going to push me wherever it is that I want to go, and I'm, I'm just going to go with the wind because it's amazing and the wind is great, right? So that's an, opt- that's an optimist. A pessimist would, you know, go and say, oh my gosh, I could, I could never get the sail right. The wind always blows in the wrong direction. My boat just keeps going in the wrong direction. And, you know, this this wind thing, I wish I had an engine, right? That's what the pessimist would say. And what the opportunist would say is, hey, where do I want to go? And how do I set my sail so that the wind can be my fuel? And so which one are you today on this Take Action Tuesday? Are you the pessimist? Are you the optimist? Or are you the opportunist? Are you the one that's taking everything and making it always good without any effort at all? Are you the pessimist that sees everything as horrible and being happened to you? And are, or, or are you the opportunist that says, if it's going to be, it's up to me and let me set my sail. That's what we're talking about today, guys. Taking action. Brad, what's going on, man? And I'm going to go ahead and bring on my boy, Mr. Dale. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah, if we're, if we're going to take some action, we got to figure out, first of all, which one of those three are we? <laughs> because we, need, we may need to find a few things uh, if we want to get going in the direction that we so choose um, or desire. We choose a decision based on, uh, on feeling, not really direction and where you want to go. So what's up, Keith? How we talking, man? How we doing today? Real well. We're... Uh... It was day one in the new facility. Day one, class one, went nice. really well. So Sweet. we're still moving stuff, and you're still up there sitting pretty in your nice little home. Not not moving weights down here with us. It's that's cool. I got you. I, you know, I thought I, I thought about reaching out to you and saying, "Hey, man, how can I help?" <laughs> I got something I, I really for your did. ass. <laughs> but you know what I thought of though? I screwed my back up real bad last Wednesday handing out turkeys. Oh, you can't and move stuff then. My, 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 my stuff is hit, so I thought about it. And I was like, damn, I can't offer what I can't, I can't follow through with. So I was like, oh, you know what, I'm hurt. not going to offer. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to lay low. So my bad, dude. I should, I should have at least set it up anyways, but yeah. But yeah man. No, we got, so, most yeah. of it, got most of it moved, but we had a good, we had a good class. And it, the best part about it is just, it, we get to see the, the type of people that we sort and sifted through to get to where we are and watch them with uncertainty and it, it's really cool because there's a lot of athletes that also don't do well they don't perform well in uncertainty but mm. there was a there's the type of athlete that we're attracting and what they're able to do in in the blink of an eye like they couldn't wait to move or they, they were looking forward to something that was different and it was really cool because then we were able to just go all right well today we're here tomorrow we're there it, that's, and we're gonna that's make how it it's going to be and then we're, we're home and away. <laughs> yeah, home and away, right? And so yeah. it's really cool to, I mean, as opposed to if you're moving a big corporate office and 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 how many different types moving of pieces. people you, yeah, right. how many different pe- people you move around. So that was cool. So we were able to do that where it's going to be a work in progress. And that's the exciting part. As much as um, locations are, the locations are totally different. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of loud they decided to clean the streets out here. Oh, sweet. Yeah. The opportunity is still is still there, and it's great, and it's a good team-based um, environment. So that was fun. And uh, and 
focusing on that that follow through, like you said, taking action, but um, not following through, seeing it through, I think is big. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we get a lot of gratification. And I know it's big for you and I when we, it's it's almost more important to to set a task, set tasks up mm -hmm. rather than even goals and targets. I think for us, we really get a lot of gratification when we can see something through to, through to the end and check it off. And that, that feeling of checking something off and knowing that the only way that things get checked off, especially for you and I, is if there's an adequate amount of pressure. Mm. <laughs> I think that's what makes it fun. <laughs> It's, it, it, it does. It actually is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit of the seat of your pants. And, and some people, it would drive them nuts to to navigate life in a similar way. But yeah. it's something that we know works. And it's something that brings out the best of, in us. And it allows us to to get what we need and make sure that it's not a draining process. Because I know that when, when for me anyway, and it, it's if I have a long time to do something, if I, if I chunk it up and do it one little step at a time, it drains me. It's mm. just, it's just there and it drains me. But right. when I can, when I can allow a little bit of pressure to build up and then knock it out, it fuels me. And knowing that that's the way you operate, it's so important is understanding how you operate. What empties your tank versus fills your tank? How big is your tank? What do you, what kind of fuel mm. are you burning? How efficiently are you burning it? And then how, how quickly can you recover? when it's empty. I think that's so important. It's so important. And the, and the vision of where you want to go is the starting point. Yeah, right? make sure so, you're going in the right direction. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you, you got to have some sort of idea of where you right. want to go. And it doesn't have to be this huge, extravagant, very detailed vision at first. It just can be a vague, you know, something in the distance, right? And then as you start to make the... Uh, make the vision a little clearer, you start to, to put in the, the bits and pieces. And along the way, just like sailing, right, you have to position yourself for the most efficient use of the wind, right? And right. so when we we're talking about being a pessimist versus an optimist and an opportunist, it's like, we have to define how we are handling our, our, uh, our, our driving of our vehicle, right? Uh -huh. You know, because again, if, if we have that vision now, it's like, okay, how am I gonna handle the road ahead, right? You know, some roads are gonna be rocky, some real roads are gonna be smooth, you know, some roads are gonna be detoured. And so you're gonna be uh, in a position to make a decision to say, okay, if I take this, this turn here, I may not know what's gonna be ahead, but I'm willing to take that challenge because you know what, this is what my, my gut or my heart is saying is the, is the quickest distance, right? I mean, the quickest, it's the shortest distance, you know, between these two points. And so making um, a, a declaration, right? So I listened to this video today and it talked about living in life and doing things that bring more excitement in your life and joy into your life and things that, and, and doing things that give you more than it takes you. Yes. And, and, it, and it was really interesting because I started thinking about that and I said, man, you know, there's so many times in our life that we, we forget about a simple phrase, I get to do this, oh, right? Yeah. And we're, we're so caught up on have to do this, have to do that. And I was talking to one of our teammates today and they were talking about regrouping and, and really looking at finishing strong with these list of things that they have set themselves out for. And one of the things I had said that they, they need to be aware of, is, is this a need to do? Oh yeah. Or is this a get to do? Because if it's a get to do, you're going to give a lot more effort. You're going to have a whole lot more fun. If it's a need to do, right, there's going to be this, this, this little bit of animosity there. And it's like, well, I, I don't really want to do it, even though I know I need to do it, right? And it puts you in this place of a lack of appreciation, right? Because it's like, you don't get to do any of it. It's almost like it's an obligation. And at that yeah. point, it starts to feel a little more draining and your effort is now stunted by your attitude. So getting back into alignment has to start with, all right, well, why did I decide to do this in the first place? Like, why was that goal so important to me? Or, or why was that uh, activity? Or what, what was it about what I was doing that brought so much joy and happiness? And then really harnessing that to get you into action and to start to set the, the sail in the direction that's going to fuel you even more efficient than you even thought. But because you're going in the right direction with the right mindset, right? That that um, that that idea now becomes 
very encouraging. You don't care how long it's going to take you. You don't, you don't look at the clock anymore. You're just going, right? And I, I was also talking to another member of our team that was kind of feeling in a rut. And I told him, I said, well, what are you comparing yourself to? Like, what, what is it that you're chasing? Because this is important. If, if you don't understand what you're chasing and why, of course you're going to feel a little lost because, again, what, what are you doing? You can be spinning around in a circle and not even knowing it, and eventually you're going to be like, I'm so exhausted. Like the two fighters the other night, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson, right. dudes look like, you know, like Snoop said, my two uncles fighting at a, at a cookout. But um, it, was, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it, it was a great reminder that, you know, we must have – we must have a, a driving force. And if we haven't figured out to this point in our life that what we do is what we are and who we are, then that has to be uh, a redesign, right? You got to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what is it that I want? And am I willing to go through whatever it takes to get it? And who am I becoming in the process? And we talked about that before, Q, is stepping away more from the 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 doing in life and becoming and stepping into yeah. the becoming right and saying okay how, how is this affecting me how is this allowing me to grow and develop and i think for me keith when people ask me what i do for work or what do i do for a living i started i say well what, what do you really mean what do i do for money what do you what do i do for joy and happiness like all those things are different to me and when i get up and i get out and i do what i do i got i i i, I get to remind myself that I chose the path that brings me the most joy and happiness. And that's what I do every day, all day, right? So I don't really look at it as a job. Does the, does the, does the, the things involved? It isn't, in what it I, isn't a, yeah, because it isn't a job. I mean, that's the no, it's not. a job, a career and a mission. Right. And that's, and that's how I feel. And I think if we all help each other to get to that place, everyone will start to find you know, those, those silver linings and everything they do. And they'll realize that, you know what, if they're at a position right now in life that basically is no longer serving them, then make a decision to move on. Don't uh -huh. stay there. The, 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 the air is stale there. And you've known it for a long time. Although it's a little fearful, right, to think of what's next, give yourself that, give yourself that push and say, hold on a second. Let me go chase what's ha what brings me happiness and joy again. Let me start working on that. And thank this right here for what it's given me so far. Yeah, Aaron, it, we ask that question a lot of times, is this the beginning or the end? Mm -hmm. So when I find people in a position where they're complaining about their job or they're just, they're not being, it's not as fulfilling, I, I often ask them why they got started in the first place. Even if it's so, something, so yeah, even if it's something like with what we do, with network mm -hmm. marketing or being an entrepreneur, well, why did you get started in the first place? And, and why is that different now? So it's, what has changed? there you go yep what has changed because because was it the did it did it is it not what you thought it was going to be or are you not who you're re being required to be right what are you chasing really what are you doing <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, a big that's, question. What, that's what that question ends up being like and so you can always ask somebody well and, and yourself is this the beginning of something new or the end of something old and and once you know that and that comes from tony robbins once you know whether it's the end, if you know it's the end of something, then you're, you're willing to, to wait it out a little bit longer. Your eyes are cut off, Keith, by the way. Oh, yeah. If it's the <laughs> beginning, if it's the beginning of something, then mm -hmm. um, you'll know what to do then as well. You'll know that it may take a little bit more effort and energy to push through something to get to get momentum. And so when it's the end of something, then you're you're looking forward to what's next. And so I think what happens is we get stuck in the middle or we don't make a conscious decision of what it actually is. Mm -hmm. And so instead we, we stay with familiarity. We, we stay with that familiar pain. And like you said, if you're, if you're an optimist, you're looking forward to that unfamiliar pleasure. And that what happens is different isn't bad. Different isn't painful. Different doesn't mean it's wrong. Different doesn't mean that it's not going to be even better. We need to re-identify and translate a lot of the things that we are running from or a lot of the things that we're stopping getting into action with. I think that's really, mm -hmm. really important. And so when you are any of those three things, whether you're an optimist, a pessimist, and, and, or any of those two things, decide which one it is at the, in the moment of the decision. 
and we've said this before, what are you focused on? What does it mean? And what are you going to do about it? There's no three. Those are three of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself. You don't need a coach for that. You don't need yeah. a mentor for that. Yeah. You need those questions plastered everywhere you go that, cause that's, what's going to determine your state. Literally those three questions will get you from one state to another. And it can be the shift, right? This reminder can be the shift that says, Oh, oh well, hold on a second. Right. Hold on a second. I, I haven't asked myself that question in a while and it's okay. And you know, many of you are now really, it, this hits you, this hits you hard, right? Good, good. Cause this, this is the part that really makes what we do in life exciting is when we have clarity, right? So Aaron, you say you love this. Amen. Um, it's a redesign. It's okay. It's, it's okay to redesign. See people redesign all the time, successful companies. If we're looking at, the process of a successful company, right? It goes from an idea to action to actually following through and getting up and running. And then once you have uh, start up and running, you don't just stay there, right? You keep looking at the processes and you say, okay, well, how can this process get better? Where can I improve? What can I upgrade? What do I need to replace? Right? And, and, and that's an ongoing process. And then it comes to a new idea, same foundation, same mission, new design. Yeah. Okay. And as you start to redesign every single month, every single day, I mean, you get to choose how, how often you're upgrading and implementing. That's your choice, right? Because we're the CEOs of our life. Okay. We have one owner, right? But we're all the CEOs of our business and so in our lives. And so as we look at these things, if we're not asking those questions, we can very well be sitting in the corner of a basement somewhere, wondering why we're sitting in the basement somewhere. When at one point that was your office, but now it's like, oh, shoot. You know what I mean? Like, what have I let me, what, what have I let pass me by? Because I never looked out the window to see what's going on outside. You ever been on a cruise ship, right? And you go to sleep and you wake up and you're in another freaking island and you're like, what yeah. the heck just happened, right? <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. Now, we chose to do that, right? We chose to hop from island to island to island. But what if in life you actually, you were, you were absent when it, when it came up to time to, to make a decision. And every time you woke up, you were on a different island and you just was like, oh my gosh, I need to stay in bed. I'm freaking out right now. I don't know where I'm at, right? So what we're inviting you to do is, is to continue to ask your question. Who am I? Where have I been? Why am I here? And where am I going? Right? These are, these are four questions that the wonderful Les, Les Brown reminded us are really the foundation of what we do and why we become, right? Because if, if we don't if we don't answer those questions, then really we're just being puppets to something in our environment. Okay. And if you do that long enough, you start to feel abused, right? Of course you're being abused. You're being tugged and pulled. But you know what? Guess what? You gave him the reins. Right? So so at that point, just ask that question. Who am I? Where have I been? Those two questions are going to bring you to the current day. Okay? It's going to bring you to the current day. And then why am I here? Now you can take from your past and say, okay, I understand now why I'm here. I understand exactly the cards that I have. It's no different than a pair of pocket rockets or a pair of twos. Like either way, once you know your hand, you can play. And then where am I going? All right, this, this is the part that a lot of people say, I don't know. Right, Keith, we talk to people. What are your goals? What are you uh -huh. so focused on? You know, and, and, it's, and it's interesting. I think more and more people now have been asked that question that I don't get a lot of I don't knows anymore, but I do get, I want to go here, but don't know how to get there. It's not congruent. Which is right? great. That's a, that's a great level three, right? So, yep. so ask those questions so that you can redefine the actions that you're taking today. Redesign the process that you're, that you're applying. And as you're doing that, right, it's all about do, plan, review. Do plan review, but remote. No, notice that I didn't put the plan first. Put the do first. Get out there. Yeah. Get, take action today. Get in there. Give yourself some some experience. Give yourself some some things you're working with, some tools, and then design where it is that you want to go based on what you know you have already. Hundred percent. And so for everybody that showed up today, the likes, the loves, the comments, especially the one Yolanda just left. Uh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we should read that. Read get that. back to her. Uh, I find focusing on joy has brought me back to my why and fueled my passion in my business, and it was not directly related. I love that. Reminding me, I am a creator, and I hold the key. It is my purpose to play and be happy creating and living. Yeah, we would to play or be played. Let's go. Drop Shut the mic, YOLO. Drop it, YOLO. Thanks for checking in. And so for everybody that, that joined us today live, the likes, the loves, the comments, that is the heartbeat and breath of this broadcast. 
for the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be seeing this all over the world on replay. Hashtag replay. Continue to, continue to breathe breath into this broadcast. Like, love, and comment so we can get back to you and build this community. And let this be the message that you needed today. Let this be the message that you share and somebody that may be suffering in silence needs today. And we'll see you tomorrow on Work Wednesday in the Tank Live, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time with Aaron Harrison and Keith Dale. Peace.